Welcome to the second segment of the program Moment Broadcast on Star Television. The program is coming to you from the Anti-Corruption Commission's office at Gloucester Street out here in Freetown, Sierra Leone. And I am in the office of the Anti-Corruption Commissioner, Francis Ben Kelfala. Can you beat that? What you didn't know? Maybe if you just follow this program through, you will be able to know a lot and get the right stories or the right information about the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let me come to my guest again, Francis Ben Kelfala. Yesterday you had a press conference in Sierra Leone. What was it all about? Uh, it was to bring the press on to speed on what we have been doing in the commission for the past two, three weeks. Because a lot is happening very fast. Uh, indictments have been taken to court. New investigations are being commenced. Arrests are taking place for allegations of corruption. Uh, our systems and processes review are engaged in the public. And I had a tour of the, our operations in the different regions uh, in the provinces. So it was really to bring this to the press who would help us to disseminate because they are partners in the fight against corruption. So but what did you tell the press yesterday? Your, what were your findings? Well, I identified the cases that have been taken to court today and particularly uh, tried to bring them to speed on certain cases. For example, we were interested in knowing what is happening with the Hatch file and I had to tell them that the reason why the case did not come up on the 30th was because uh, we had to redo the indictment and file it. Uh, they also were interested in knowing issues surrounding certain arrests that were made, for example, the TPMS, for example, uh, where an individual was arrested. What is the TPMS all about? It's the Transport Port Management Association. It's, it's, it's a system that tracks the containers that come into Sierra Leone. It's part of the international obligation that Sierra Leone has. Mm -hmm. It also goes with a fee because those containers pay certain amounts to to the to the to, to, to there was a there was a, a joint partnership between the government of Sierra Leone and a private company to do this so that they do the tracking and when those those companies pay. It is shared 60 to 40 between them. The government of Sierra Leone gets 60% of what is profit on this, and the company gets 40%. Uh, that was the initial arrangement, and a lot of things happened. That initial arrangement was later changed to a fixed amount of $300,000. Now there is a conflict, there is, there, is, there is a disagreement, or the government is saying that the company ought to have paid it up to $11 million. Whereas the company is saying that only if they continue with believing that it is a 60 40 sharing arrangement, that is the time they would have paid such an amount. But they are saying that our parliament ratified an agreement which changed the financial clause in that agreement from 60 plus 40 to a fixed amount per annum. Was that the correct thing to do? Dollars. Was that the correct thing to do by the House of Parliament? Well, it is really, it is certainly a questionable thing to do because um, if you have to change something that brings such revenue to the government, there has to be a financial basis for doing so. So far, our investigations have not really established any serious financial basis for having to alter that initial arrangement. And what is bad, they made it retroactive. So what had been accrued to government already was wiped out. That may have been seven million, eight million dollars, and replaced with three hundred thousand dollars per annum. So as we speak, why is the government is saying that you should pay us something like eight million dollars? The businessman is saying, no, I only owe you one point three million dollars because your parliament has changed. So these are the things we have to look into. And this was done by the previous parliament, not this, this, this current parliament. But these are the things we have to look at to see if our parliament should be doing such things. And then we really try to understand that these things are not in the best interest of Sierra Leone for us to put in these systems, processes, 
guidelines to make sure such things don't happen that cost the theory. So um, we will engage Parliament on this going forward. So is the Commission going to be actively involved in ensuring that the money is being paid back to government? Yes, in fact, what we have done is since the businessman said I owe 1.3 million euros, we said, okay, whilst we are investigating you, pay the 1.3 million euros that you say you owe. So we, he was under arrest and we had him do an undertaking to pay immediately to the government of Sierra Leone $500,000, which he has done. He has written instructions to his bank to transfer $500,000 to the government. That money is being transferred to us as I speak to you now. And he has agreed to pay $100,000 every month to us for the purpose of taking the government. So, without prejudice to the investigations itself, which is still ongoing, to really determine what happened and uh, what really is owed to government, we are taking a proactive step to take away that which we can in the meantime. Because of, as you all know, there are developmental projects needed to be done, and these are monies that could be applied to them. Let's talk about you recouping money from other areas that is bringing it to the coffer of government. Could you just throw some light on that? Yes, uh, for example, before I became commissioner, well, the commissioner before the previous commissioner I replaced had entered into a settlement with uh, people involved in the Nasik Ferry case, and they agreed that they, they accepted liability and they said they will pay 500 million euros each. I think there are five, four or five of them, 500 million euros each to the government as a way of atoning for their involvement in the, in the, in the buying of the ferries that everybody knew the ferries were not really good, they were rotting ferries. And, uh, so they have paid 200 million before and that is the only payment they made and that's like three years ago. So when I took over, I called for the file looked at this disagreement and I said then why have they not completed payment by now? And why in fact they did not follow up to pay? So I instructed the investigators to bring all of them in. They were brought in. And uh, I gave them a period of time within which they are supposed to pay. In the meantime, those who were not on bail were put on bail. And if they fail to pay, I think the highest time of giving them is nine months so that they can pay over a period of time to complete within one year everything that they owe the people of Sierra Leone as agreed by the commissioner before me. So um, those recoveries are coming in. Yes, at two days ago, one of them paid 50 million loans and he promised to continue paying. I think today another one came and he was making an arrangement to continue payment. So the payments are coming in. We have other cases where recoveries are being made. SLRA, for example, entered into an agreement to move certain people along that hillside by password. So they paid them, and after paying them, the road was repositioned. So it was no longer going to pass through their houses and all these things. Bring back the money that has been given to you became a problem. So, we are also recovering from them. Some of them are paying 20 million, 30 million. Some have paid completely. But we are continuing to push for them to pay. There are people also, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, who were engaged in double dipping. Somebody working as a nurse, but also collecting money as, as somebody else working on Ebola cases. When they ought not have done so. So we entered into an agreement with them, with timelines for them to pay back the money to to, to the coffers of Sierra Leone and some of them have been paying and those who cannot pay they have a timeline within which we are going to take drastic measures against them. So we are trying to recover what we can on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone in line with our mandate at this global. Tell me a little bit about Ebola because this is where we had a lot of stories being told but we never got the correct stories. Now that you're sitting in the office of the uh, Anti-Corruption Commission, maybe you can spill the bin over to viewers watching the program. I mean, it's a sad situation where people make money out of tragedy. 
particularly the tragedy on the scale of Ebola. As we all know, the audit report that came out of the 2015 Ebola outbreak was very damning. So I met a file here which was investigated since 2015, but really not much happened about it. So when I got here, one of the first things I do was to reopen that file. Gave it to the investigators to liaise with audit service to confirm whether those things that were rolled over to 2016 have been satisfied. We are working with audit service to see if they were satisfied. Those who are not satisfied, uh, we are going to charge them to cut on that file. But more generally, I have commissioned a wider investigation into what happened with the funds that came into Sierra Leone as far as the fight against Ebola is concerned. How much money Particular, we are talking about? How much funds came into Sierra Leone? We are talking about millions and millions of dollars. Some of them were used for the purposes for which they were brought. But some of them, we simply want answers about how they were used because we all know how our countrymen died and perished. Some people, some of the survivors up to now have not been even paid. The orphans, we are not sure what is happening with them, whether their future is secured. Those who were who committed to receiving resources to make their lives better, we don't know whether it's going to happen. But what we are doing is to carry out, for example, the Ministry of Social Welfare is being investigated progressively by the ACC to see whether the monies that came from UNICEF, the monies that came from World Bank, the monies that came from other sources were applied for the purposes for which they came. And we are already having interesting findings and as we go, the people of Sierra Leone will be updated as to what's happening. But we want the people. Uh, my time at the ACC, I want the people to have answers to those things they have been asking questions about and to keep them involved so that answers are given to them timely. It is not an easy thing to do, but we will continue to do so as long as it does not compromise our investigation. So, uh, as far as Ebola is concerned, we are looking into it and we are trying to see how we can provide answers for our country. So, would you be looking at Mod Slide itself again? Yes, we are already looking at most light. Um, the file, I made the file here, which was being investigated in respect of the most light. Um, I know that what was left to be done in that file is to identify whether, in fact, for example, those who had located houses for the most light and for which controversies arose, arose either because they ended up not having houses allocated to them is for us to see what was the allocation criteria set by the ministry before the project started. So the mod slide is being looked into. Uh, a lot of other files that have to do, for example, the investigations into the resources that were squandered uh, from Red Cross. We are also looking into those. And those files are underway. Uh, Progressively, we will keep the press informed as to what is happening with them so that they can help us inform the public as to what is happening with them. As you can see, it's a lot to do. The ACC uh, does not have the desired capacity to handle them, but we are doing our best to be capable of handling them within the resources that we have, hoping and believing that the government is going to expand our operations by capacitating us in terms of the resource allocation to us, in terms of our ability to bring in manpower, in terms of supporting us to finish the ACC building which is being built at our hill, so that we can house ourselves better because space is very important to such a fact and uh, we are working on it. I was going to jump on that but before we talk about the space accommodation because where you are today I think it is very, very small now. I think you need to go to your place right now and start working. True or false? Yes, very true. There is a building going that has, that is scheduled to have the capacity to house. In fact, this building we are in now, this we call the old building, is rented from the cathedral. Uh, it is an old structure. 
it wasn't designed for the operations and purposes of a security-based institution like the ACC. And in fact, we also have satellite institutions because all the departments uh, of, of the ACC cannot be housed here. So we have uh, some departments and auto building. We have another department somewhere there. These are all uh, reasons why we think the government should fully fund our building project. And let us bring it up to speed. If that building project is up to speed, uh, we house ourselves properly, we can be able to expand our operations better because even here now, we want to have more investigators because you've had all the files that we are dealing with. We have dozens of other files that I've not even mentioned this interview. We have very few investigators. If you want to bring in investigators, you start worrying about where to house them because they are not going to sit on top of each other. So these are things that we believe uh, on the wider scale the government will support us on. But my engagement with the current government has been very good. They have committed, they have assured me that they will give the support that we need to find. And that is why we are doing everything we can to make them see that we are serious to carry out the mandate that we are given by law and the confidence placed in us. I am sure once they see the results that are coming out of this, it will be easier for them to commit resources to support. Do you have any more challenges apart from the accommodation issue? Of course, there are challenges in terms of capacity. There are challenges in terms of resources, equipment, for example. Uh, the ACC should be carrying out covert operations. We need the, the equipment to be capable of this. We need coding devices. Uh, we need properly trained individuals in the various departments, systems and processes. Review. Uh, investigators prosecutors. We need people. Now we are setting up the anti-corruption court. We have also, we have already been given the, the, the building at New England that was used as a special court for Sierra Leone. That building has been allocated by the judiciary to us to have a court that is specifically empowered to look into allegations of corruption and to try corruption cases. We need capacity building for those who will be working in that. We need resources to refurbish that building, to bring it up to speed, to be a symbol of the fight against corruption. We are already working on it, but there are enormous challenges because the resources are not there. So we, I can take this opportunity to call on the government and the partners and stakeholders in the fight against corruption to see how they can support us. We all know how difficult this job is, but we are prepared for it. We believe that all we need is the support and capacity to do so, and we will produce results. Mr. Francis Ben Kelfala, what do you think about your security? Are you not afraid to be in this kind of a job where it's you have more enemies than friends? It's an interesting question. Um, Many people actually raise issues about my security. Um, the police have given me the security that they believe is necessary to take care of me. I have bodyguards and I have uh, stationed security at my residence day and night. But you see, I don't even believe that I have more enemies than friends. I think I have more friends than enemies. Because I am doing my job fairly. Francis Ben Kafala, the Anti Corruption Commission boss out here in Sierra Leone. Well, we are coming toward the end of the program, not much time left for us. Now, I just want you to address some issues for me. Now, you have the platform to talk to Sierra Leoneans and people beyond Sierra Leone. One, on how to avoid corruption on how to not even think of corruption, on how to make Sierra Leone a better place, and also our young children who are coming up today. They are a big problem because they were born in the midst of corruption, and they grew up in it. So to change habits, it is not easy. You have a platform to talk to them. Well, um what I will tell the people of Sierra Leone is this. Corruption is driven by greed. 
it is the desire or the belief that what you can benefit is better than what the collective can benefit. And in a country where 99% of us profess to be Christians and Muslims, where we believe that the good neighborly principle is better than the individual who has to be by himself, we have to understand that the fight against corruption is for the collective. We have to understand that it is what will secure the future of our children. It is what will benefit all of us collectively. So we all have to come together to speak out against corruption for each of us to be one man or one woman statement of what it is to live with integrity so that we can imbibe the culture of patriotism. Once we do that, we'll be able to have clean water supply for our children. We'll be able to have good electricity. We'll be able to have good roads. Our children will go to good school. Our government will have the resources to put in place the rule of law by making sure the judiciary, the legislature, and its own uh, apparatus, apparatus work well. Once we do that, we would have positioned ourselves to be among countries that are called great. Would you not better be in a country that is called great? It is not going to happen by magic. It is going to happen that individuals, a critical mass of people who believe and work towards it. So all of you should join us at the ACC in the fight against corruption. Let us change the story of Sierra Leone starting now. What would you like or how would you like to see the Sierra Leone in the next coming weeks, months or years? My vision for Sierra Leone, which is in line with the vision of the president who appointed me, His Excellency Julius Madabio, is to see a Sierra Leone that properly positions itself, positions itself to be respected by the outside world. A Sierra Leone where the basics of life, food, education, water supply, good health are available to every Sierra Leone. A Sierra Leone where people's basic livelihood are guaranteed by there being employment for everybody. A Sierra Leone where no man is ready to take advantage of the other person. There is limited exploitation of others' condition. A Sierra Leone where we can visit other parts of the world and be very proud to come back to it. More importantly, a developed Sierra Leone. That is what I want to see. And that is why I took up this job. And that is why I want to contribute in my own little way to support the work of the president who has committed himself to change the story of Sierra Leone. And I intend to do it very well. Young as he is, is it not a role model for you? Thank you for watching the program and let me thank my guest on the program today, the Anti-Corruption Commission boss, Francis Ben Kalfala. I want to thank you for your time and patience for coming on the program today. Moment. Thank you very much, sir. It's been an honor hosting you in my office. Well, we'll be coming back again. Thank you. Thank you, viewers, for watching the program. Maybe, maybe, if you not learn something, this is time for you to learn a lot and, you know, go alongside with the accepted norms in society. This is what counts. Don't be a recalcitrant or an outcast in society. It is not going to take you anywhere. We love you all. Think Sierra Sleep Sierra Eat Sierra Leone. Bye-bye. Moment we'll be back.
you're interested in the political, social and economic issues around Sierra Leone? Do you want to know about burning issues in the county? Well, Moment is the program for you. Moment is an app program that provides analysis on political, social and economic issues in Sierra Leone. The program shall be a live broadcast in a studio starting a vision with an anchor and guests from around the country.